The past couple of years have been extremely hard not just for us humans, but for other living things as well. From shifting weather patterns that threaten food production, to rising sea levels that increase the risk of catastrophic flooding as a result of climate change. Non-stop discrimination of people with different races, especially the Africans. Water contamination and shortage. Police brutality. Sexual assault. Human trafficking. And so much more. The preceding issues are only a handful of the terrible things that people throughout the world still deal with on a daily basis, even up to this day. With that being said, do you believe as the global leaders, you've done enough to eradicate these issues? We don't believe so. We are extremely grateful for the efforts that all we have exerted, but to do that we think that those aren't enough. As global leaders, it is your duty to move swiftly, deliberately, and thoughtfully in managing the complicity of things. The prayer is the action. Numerous activists have raised their voices in our current world to fight for what they stand for and on behalf of others who were unable to do so. Some of the things they do to pursue justice are even morally correct at times, especially when they act carelessly and put people who legitimately want to fight at risk. Similar to the protesters who glued themselves to an artwork by Vincent van Gogh after throwing soup over it. In a new statement, the organization claimed that their activities were in reaction to the government's inactivity over the cost of living and climate crisis. Rather than protecting our planet and its inhabitants, it appears that the government is more concerned with protecting the artwork. Although their method of advocating for what they believe in is not very noble, when we're activists of a right, some people already put their lives at danger to protect our planet's ecosystem. Where are some of them now though? Buried six feet deep inside the coffin. Over the previous 10 years, there have been more than 1,700 documented killings of environmental activists, or one every roughly two days on average. At least 1,733 land and environmental defenders were killed between 2012 and 2021, according to the data from the Global Witness. With Brazil, Colombia, the Philippines, Mexico, and Honduras as the deadliest nations. These killings were carried out by hitmen, organized crime groups, and their own government. In addition, between 2012 and 2021, more than two-thirds of the killings of persons attempting to conserve forests rivers and other ecosystems transpired in Latin America with 342 deaths occurring in Brazil and 322 in Colombia, 154 people died in Mexico and 117 people died in Honduras. With 270 killings, the Philippines was under a troublesome nation. This simply serves to highlight how dangerous to be an environmentalist. All we need is change in order to save the environment and our world. Activists are being silenced rather than being given a hand to help eliminate most of these problems. For environmental activists, there have been some notable successes. The wild coast of South Africa's Eastern Cape's indigenous tribes defeated Shell Il Court last year, compelling the firm to stop oil prospecting in areas where whales nest. We think that other people of different nations all around the globe should be heard as well. As global citizens, especially in the University of Father Sotonino Orios, there are also other global concerns that genuinely concern us and we want to fight for it. Advocating for the victims of sexual assault and sexual abuse is one of it. Every country deals with the issue of sexual assault. Violence against women and children chooses no time or place, but it can happen to anyone during a time when we least expect it. When COVID-19 struck globally, Rape cases went up to more than 2,000 with authorities receiving, on average, eight reports of sexual assault per day. Even now, despite the fact that these problems seem to have no end, we choose to seek solutions that will largely abolish it. However, it remains the case that no street is secure for anyone because sexual predators could be waiting in the shadows for the next prey. Women aren't the only victims of sexual assault and abuse. Just like what we've said, it can happen to anyone, especially to men. Men and boys who have been sexually assaulted or abused may have the same feelings and reactions as other survivors of sexual assault. 
but they may also face some additional challenges because of social attitudes and stereotypes about men and masculinity. Although now it is universally accepted to be frequent, rape and sexual assault are still largely underreported. There is no one size fits all remedy to this crime. We cannot simply persuade everyone to stop doing it, but we must not commit behavior that contributes to this transgression. To put a stop to cruelty and exploitation, we should act as one united global community. The reality of rape and sexual assault must be known, as well as what may be done to stop it. These problems will continue to worsen and will inevitably affect us all. So as global leaders, when do you plan to take actions in these? When all of us have no food to eat or when all of us are already deep down the ocean? Leaders, do not fail us. You are seated there for a reason. Let us do our parts as inhabitants of the earth and let us think of ways to help our planet before it's too late for all of us. May all of you hear our voices and immediately do the right thing concerning these matters.